Good afternoon everyone, today's topic is antibiotics and we will specifically discuss the cell wall synthesis inhibitors and also cell membrane integrity disruptors. So the antibiotics are divided to two groups, broad spectrum and narrow spectrum. Broad spectrum antibiotics will cover the, uh, most of the families well, narrow spectrum antibiotics will only cover gram positive, for example, or even more narrow uh, types of the antibiotics, or for example, mycobacterial only. Further, we can divide uh, antibiotics to bactericidal and bacteriostatic. Bactericidal will uh, kill the bacteria and that is why the amount of the bacteria will decrease and bacteriostatic will prevent the growth and division of the bacteria uh, that will prevent the increase in the number of bacteria but those bacteria that are already uh, divided they have to be managed by the immune system to uh, uh, to optimize the treatment the uh, different um, uh, methods are used to identify the most susceptible antibiotic for the bacteria and that includes kirby bowler method uh, and uh, that uh, usually use the lysis discs to uh, identify the uh, activity of the specific antibiotic and also the second test dilution test can be used to measure the minimal antibiotic concentration required for a bactericidal activity and also the uh, mean uh, therapeutic concentration for the bacteria that will kill 99 and 9 percent of the bacterial growth so these uh, specific methods can further help uh, in the selecting of the uh, particular antibiotics but most of the time the selection of the uh, antibiotic is made by the principle of the uh, umbrella so Sorry, that means that the uh, antibiotic is selection is as broad as it can be to be able to cover the uh, particular okay. disease uh, and the next uh, is the classification for the antibi antibiotics and the antibiotics are divided to the uh, five groups ac uh, according to the uh, mechanisms of action and the first group is the uh, cell uh, wall synthesis inhibitors uh, that uh, include the penicillins, beta lactams, uh, uh, cephalosporins and uh, sorry uh, penicillins cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactam. So the second group is inhibitors of the protein synthesis inhibitors that includes the tetracyclines, amino glycosides, macrolides, and also some other antibiotics. Then the third group is the inhibitors of the nucleic acid function or synthesis that includes the fluoro quinolones and rifampin and uh, the fourth group is the uh, in, uh, antibiotics that inhibit the cell membrane function includes the isoneazid and some other polymyxin. Uh, the last but not the least is the folic acid synthesis inhibitors that are sulfonamides.
uh, the latter inhibits the uh, synthesis of the tetrahydrofolic acid from the paraminibenzoic acid because bacteria uh, bacterial cell wall is non permeable for the folic acid and that is why bacterial um, uh, cells have to produce folic acid themselves unlike the uh, most of uh, animals so the Let's talk about the uh, mechanisms of action of the agram uh, negative uh, and gram positive bacteria uh, differences. So the mechanisms of action of the uh, uh, cell wall synthesis inhibitors is based on the inhibition of the synthesis of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is part of the cell wall of the gram-positive uh, microorganisms mostly uh, because gram-negative microorganisms have only one uh, thin chain of the peptidoglycan and the most protection it comes from the outer membrane with the polysaccharides. Uh, but for the gram positive microorganisms, the peptidoglycan uh, chains are multiple and they make a strong protection against the most of the uh, antibiotics. That is why the destruction of this uh, cell wall can uh, reduce the protective properties of the cell membrane and that leads to the leakage of the uh, inner cell uh, fluids and uh, lysis of the bacteria. So the composition of the uh, uh, peptidoglycan chain is from n acetyl glutamic acid and n acetyl acetyl muramic acid and this long chain are connected with the oligopeptides and the if you look at the uh, synthesis of the of these peptidoglycan chains uh, we uh, we can see that the uh, there are so-called penicillin binding proteins that uh, connect these chains using oligopeptides and that makes the uh, uh, integrity of the cell wall. So that is why those routes that bind to the, this penicillin binding proteins are disrupting the final stage of the uh, synthesis of the cell wall and that includes the connection between the lysine and alanine residues of the oligopeptides chains uh, that make this linkage and make the uh, poly uh, oligopeptide stable. So uh, most of the antibiotics that inhibit the uh, penicillin binding pro protein contain the beta-lactam ring. Beta-lactam ring uh, is responsible for the activity of the antibiotic. And these antibiotics include penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactam. Uh, Carbapenems and monobactams are a little bit different but still, um, so the so here is the structure of the carbapenems, uh, and but the same structure, almost the same structure is for the other uh, antibiotics. So if we look at the classification of the antibiotics, it's uh, penicillins uh, and glute. The this is the largest group 
of the cell wall inhibitors uh, and include uh, many of the commonly used uh, like amoxicillin and ampicillin uh, but also penicillin G as a narrow spectrum antibiotic methicillin is only used for the test purposes and many others so then this is the second group cephalosporins is divided to five generations the fifth generation is absent here so and these generations are different uh, by bioavailability a way of administration the spectrum the width of the spectrum and also by the resistance uh, resistance flora and then the third group is carbapenems includes imipenem and silastatin meropenem and ertapenem so imipenem is always combined with the silastatin uh, because of the toxicity to prevent the toxicity of the imipenem then and the last but not the least is a monobactam that is the only member of this group is astronam that is a narrow spectrum antibiotic all other antibiotics are broad spectrum and penicillin G is also narrow spectrum okay so let's talk about the antibiotic spectrum of the penicillin including the natural penicillin so natural uh, penicillins will cover the ram positive cocci including streptococcus pneumonia and uh, streptococcus uh, pyogenes and streptococcus viridans so with the streptococcus pneumonia there are so many uh, uh, bacteria that is resistant and those resistance that stains are called methicillin resistant uh, and uh, the gram positive bacilli include the bacillus anthracis uh, and colonium bacterium diphtheria so these are uh, end of the gram positive bacteria that is susceptible to the natural penicillins the bacillus anthracis will lead to the anthrax it's very rare disease completely uh, cured completely removed from the surface of the planet Corinna bacterium diphtheria is still commonly seen mostly in children then gram negative microorganisms include the neisseria gonorrhea gonorrhea is most commonly seen sexually transmitted disease in the world and the silver nitrate is used to prevent the gonorrheal uh, disease of the eyes or for the newborns and then in the uh, adults the uh, us, the disease is usually sexually transmitted and then um, uh, also, there are also resistant strains. And Neisseria meningitis will lead to the meningitis that is uh, um, uh, mostly seen in adults. Then we have uh, anaerobic coverage that includes Clostridium perfringens and also Spirohetes that is another uh, sexually transmitted disease that is trypanoma pallidum or uh, the syphilis leads to the syphilis that is the second most commonly seen sexually transmitted disease uh, very contagious and uh, hope uh, hopefully the uh, treatment for the syphilis is very effective because these um, microorganisms will not develop resistance to the uh, antibiotics including the penicillins 
Okay, so then if we look at the other extended spectrum of penicillin, include the ampicillin and amoxicillin, or these are called aminopenicillins, and additional coverage includes gram positive enterococci and gram positive bacilli, that list is Listeria monocytogenes, and the most important is gram negative coverage that is. Uh, most useful is Schlicher coli uh, that is uh, uh, commonly seen in the intestine, intestinal diseases will lead to the intestinal diseases but also can lead to the other organ diseases as well. Then Haemophilus influenza that is a, a very small bacteria that is uh, hard to identify. The symptoms in uh, are very uh, similar to that uh, seen with the flu. That is why um, the, when it was first um, described, uh, supposed to be a viral disease, but eventually the later research has been concluded that this is a bacteria that is could not be grown on normal uh, uh, on normal conditions requires special requirements for the uh, colonial growth. Then Proteus mirabilis and Salmonella tifi lead to the typhus. So then we also have a, a anti um, um, Ticarcerin and piperacerin, this are uh, extended spectrum also, uh, and will additionally cover the Enterobacter species, Escherichia coli, Proteus mirabilis, and uh, that is so called uh, um, uh, Antipsodomonas. Uh, or penicillins, the additional cover also the pseudomonas aeruginosa that is resistant to other uh, penicillin antibiotics. So, and I do further enhance the antibiotic spectrum of the penicillins. The scientists have been developed uh, beta lactamase inhibitors because most of the uh, gram positive microorganisms will produce a beta lactamases that destroy the beta lactam ring and this way you know, the activity is lost. So uh, the carbapenems and monobactams uh, are not uh, susceptible to the beta lactamase inhibitors uh, and that is why they don't require additional uh, inhi beta lactamase inhibitors that are listed here. But penicillins and cephalosporins uh, may require. So mostly penicillins usually are combined with one of these beta lactamase inhibitors. Uh, for example, uh, amoxicillin is combined with the clavulanic acid and uh, piperacillin is combined with the tazobactam and the ampicillin is, bind, is usually combined with the sulbactam and avibactam is also can be used with the piperacillin. So these are most commonly used uh, combinations of the antibiotics with the beta lactamase inhibitors. So these uh, substances are not antibiotics but they increase the Bacteria, antibacterial spectrum of the antibiotics, uh, including those are, that are uh, producing uh, better lactam mass inhibitors. And the uh, way of administration for the penicillins is also important because the, not all of them are acid stable. So, for example, and also bioavailability availability is not good for, for example, natural penicillins. Uh, 
and that is why most of the penicillin including benzyl penicillin is injected uh, by uh, intramuscular injection uh, penicillin G uh, or benzyl penicillin uh, and uh, only certain penicillin think are uh, included here like the penicillin V uh, oxacillin, nafcillin, or all antistaphylococcal penicillins and also all amino penicillins uh, are active by oral administration and uh, the, also uh, the antistaphylococcal penicillins are uh, resistant to the penicillinase that is a subfamily of the beta-lactamases uh, and uh, some uh, other antibiotics will require combination with the beta lactamase inhibitors uh, to be re resistant to the penicillinase. When it comes to the side effects, the most commonly seen are nausea and vomiting, then the diarrhea, and also uh, uh, hypersensitivity reactions can be seen. Uh, with the rashes or from the rashes to the anaphylactic shock anaphylaxis of the whole body so additional uh, adverse effects at high doses may include the uh, pain feeling at the end of the finger tips that is a neurotoxic effect seen in long in large doses with the long treatment with uh, during one month or more um, and also photosensitivity can be seen so then uh, let's look at the, some of the antibiotics that uh, have similar mechanisms of action uh, but they inhibit the cell wall integrity that includes uh, phosphomycin, cycloserine, vancomycin and bacitracin. So these antibiotics uh, will prevent one of the steps of the uh, development of the uh, mem uh, cell, cell wall protein. So for the phosphomycin uh, inhibits the first step of the development of the cell wall uh, including the uh, the uh, more uh, inhibition of the enzyme uh, that is uh, a more aza and uh, then uh, the cycloserine is inhibiting the dimerization of the D-alanine uh, ligase. So uh, when the two D-alanine residues will make a dimer D-alanine D-alanine. Uh, vancomycin uh, is inhibiting the lipid carrier recycling that prevents uh, movement of these uh, proteins and bacidracin prevents the uh, transpeptidation and tra uh, transglycosylation of the peptide uh, that lead to the development of the peptidyl glycans. So these uh, drugs are not beta-lactam antibiotics, but they have similar mechanisms of action and also the spectrum of activity is the broadest uh, and uh, covers most of the gram positive and negative microorganisms are listed before. If uh, we speak about the side effects, then phosphomycin will lead to the nausea, vomiting and headache uh, and also diarrhea. And the cycloserine will lead to the uh, central neuropathy and psychosis. Vancomycin may decrease the blood pressure when injected intravenously slow with a slow intravenous injection also is uh, uh, there is some toxicity for the kidneys and autotoxicity is a specific uh, 
adverse effects and sometimes neutropenia can be seen uh, in, with a long uh, treatment. And bacitacin will lead to the nausea, vomiting, skin rashes and also uh, uh, toxicity to the kidneys. Oh, and uh, let's also discuss the antimicrobacterial drugs that include the isoniazid uh, and uh, the mechanism of action of the isoniazid uh, is based on the production of the isoniazid nicotine amide denucleated adduct that is catalyzed in the bacterial cell and that prevents the uh, synthesis of the uh, mycolic acid that is uh, the main protection of the this uh, my, microbials from the antibiotics because the structure of the nicobacterial cell wall is a little bit different from uh, other mm, normal bacteria uh, including gram positive and gram negative uh, the mycobacterial cells have a inner plasma me membrane the peptidoglycane uh, same as the gram positive bacteria uh, and then they have also a arabinogalactin layer that uh, is connecting that is uh, holding the mycolic acid residues. So mycolic acids themselves are long fatty acids that are produced in the cell. And then outer lipids uh, give an additional protection. Mycolic acid is very uh, uh, thick or, and protects from most of the uh, antibiotics. That is why uh, only some of the specific antibiotics are de developed to, uh, uh, against the uh, diseases that uh, are produced by these bacteria, including the leprosa and tuberculosis. So uh, the isoniazid is a uh, prodrug should be catalyzed in the bacteria with the Kg uh, and then inhibits the nicolic acid synthesis. And the etambutol, another uh, antimicrobacterial drug, will prev uh, destroy the arabinogalactan layer of the cell wall, and that will lead to the uh, destroy of the peptidoglycan and inner plasma membrane and the lysis of the cell wall. When it comes to the side effects, isoniazid will lead to the liver toxicity and peripheral neuropathia while entambotol uh, may lead to the neuropathia and a loss of vision. Thank you for your attention and see you next week. Bye-bye.